Hello, it's Crafty Carol here from Northern Ireland, your local independent stamping up demonstrator. And uh, here I am with another little video for you as part of my Christmas countdown. I think it's week five. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm losing track of the weeks. I really ought to be more organised. Anyway, today I'm going back to use my this set that I absolutely love, this golden greenery um, stamp set with these lovely images of bells and sprigs and the fabulous range of dyes that goes with it. Um, that cuts out everything plus berries and all sorts for you and little little tiny groups of berries oh there's so much in this set it's so gorgeous um so these are all the stamps i'm going to be using some of those for the sentiments because obviously this set doesn't have any sentiments i am using the greetings of the season um so i've used Merry Christmas, both words separately. Um, I've already done some of the preparation and I've used this one. May your holiday season be filled with warmth and cheerful celebration, which I'm going to use in the middle of the card. And the other things I'm using today are these, the Stylish Shapes dies, which I think are probably my favourite set of dies anywhere. <laughs> We're using uh, the third largest circle and we're going to use this die this banner die to cut out the sentiment but i'm going to show you but my sentiment i only want this long so i'm going to show you how i can reduce the size of that so I'll get that die out because i need that one put those all to one side and get my stuff here so what do we need well i've got some blocks and stamps i'm using very vanilla because i do think it goes best with the golden greenery and the gorgeous papers that, that link with it oh the paper didn't mention the paper i am using this this is part of the seasons of what is it seasons of golden green i think it is sweet and um, this is the season of elegance paper and it is just to die for and um, i've already actually made a, a a card for a friend which I can't show you because I've already posted it but <laughs> I made a friend using this lovely red you've got these greens you've got um a lovely oh there it is a lovely um pale one and then you've got a different set of splatters on on some of the others they are just to die for I actually have resisted using it because when it's gorgeous paper like this um honestly it's gorgeous pretty peacock as well um I honestly don't particularly want to start using it. I'm terrible. Who's that? Who else is like that? Anybody else like that that um, really hates using gorgeous paper? <laughs> or perhaps it's just me. Who knows? Anyway, I've cut my base card and I'm going to have a landscape card opening that way. The reason I do it that way instead of that way is that it stands up better for the recipient. So that's my landscape base, which is half a sheet of A4, cut at 10 and a half across. Um, so that is 10 and a half by 29.6, scored at 14.8. If you're working in a US letter size, then it's 11 inches by four and a quarter inches, scored at five and a half. Then I have my piece of the gorgeous DSP, and this piece is my normal layer, so it's 10 by 14.3 or 4 by 5 and a quarter for US letter size. So that is my first layer. I've got an envelope as well because I don't want to forget to stamp that. Then I have already die cut a few bits. So I've die cut that circle. I think it was just, no, it was the second size circle. So it was the second size one down, sorry, from um, Stylish Shapes. And I've already cut that out because it's got this gorgeous uh, stitched sort of element around the edge and it just adds something to the circle. Although, frankly, we're not going to see that much of it. <laughs> I have already stamped and embossed my sentiment. Merry Christmas, as you can see. So I've used the Christmas stamp, stamped that, added the embossing powder, then so I could see where it was. Then I stamped the Merry on top, added the embossing powder. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut it out. Then I've also die cut a load of, of different things. So I've used old olive to cut out three sprigs. They're not all going to stick together. Three sprigs. Then I've used, I've cut out the other two sprigs. So this one with the sort of V-shaped elements and this one with the round ones. And I've chopped this one up into small bits. So I've got lots of little bits of, of gold. So I just cut them up. I'm going to do the same with this. So I thought I'd, sh I'd just show you what I do. So I sort of look for where a sprig is and think, what could I use in that sprig? And it does mean I can't use all of it because um, some of it is going to get in the way of some of the others. This one is actually more difficult to cut up than the, than the other one. But I can see that I've got a little one at the bottom here. So I'll chop that off. 
and I'm going to just cut into the stem to finish cutting this leaf here. So that gives me one little bit there. Then I can use this bit here. So I'm actually going to just chop off the end of that, that leaf there. And I'm going to cut into this. Oh, what shall I do? Yes, I'll cut into this leaf here. And this one here, I'm going to just cut out. Ooh, I might cut that branch off actually. Yep, so we'll do that. And just reshape this one here that I managed to cut off too much. There, that gives me another one. Then I can get two more from here. I shall cut this bit off here. And this time I'll cut that branch off so that I just get this leaf. And that leaves me with a final little sprig at the end. So worth just fiddling a little bit with these bigger die cuts because you don't always want them big. I don't want them big because I'm going to make a sort of wreath around my centre circle. So before we go any further, let me show you um, how I want to cut this out. So I've got the bigger, dana, bigger banner die <laughs> and obviously my piece isn't big enough to cut that out with. It's just a little bit too small and it also is very big and I don't want it that big. So I'm actually going to do a partial die cut. So for that, I'm going to put the end where I want the end of it to be. So I want it there and I want the other end to come in here. So I'm going to cut it first this way and I'm going to just use a little bit of, oh, that's no good. Let me just find a bit that is actually sticky. I might have to get a new bit of tear and tape. Oh no, that bit's okay. So I'm just gonna stick that down so I can hold it in place. And then I'm gonna run it through my die cut machine. Everything in the way, of course. So just noisy when we open these down with the clicks. Get my various, oh, get my um, plates. So I'm actually going to chop this bit off because I don't need that. That was just the scrap that I used. And then I can run this through. Remembering, I think I mentioned this before, but always, always make sure you're, whoops, I'm <laughs> dropping it out now. When you're putting your plates together, overlap them so they're not all together in a line. And I do find it goes through this mini machine much better. The big machine doesn't matter, but for this mini machine, you definitely want to um, just make sure your plates are overlapping and then it runs through more easily. So as you can see, if I turn it over, I've cut out that bit. Now I want to cut this bit. So I am going to just take this off. So I've got rid of the edge bit there. And then I am going to move it along, move, move the die along. Let me get that bit off. So I'm going to move the die along till it's where I want it to be. And then I can just check. And if you if you sort of wiggle it a little bit, wiggle your piece of card, you'll find it actually sort of falls into the holes. So the holes fall into where the holes are on the die and it just holds it in place. So I can then put my um Put the uh, sticky tape back on and then run it through my machine again. I can just run it through this end bit. I just want that bit cut. There we go. And there we have oh, our banner. So a narrower banner than the die just by moving it along and allowing the die to fit itself into the holes. You can see I haven't got any overlap. I'm really, really pleased with that. Good. So just get rid of this, get it out of the way, put my die back. It's always the tidying up bits that take the time, isn't it? Ooh, big bangs. There we go. Ooh, throw that bit away. So let me make up the card. Oh, no, before I make the card, I'm just going to do the inside. I forgot about the inside. Let me do the stamping and stuff first. So, um, I've got, yes, I've got this large sentiment. Um, may It's a lovely one. May your holiday season be filled with warmth and cheerful celebration, which I really like. It's not even straight on the, on the block. I'm just going to adjust that because it offends my OCD type thing. <laughs> That's better. Right. So I'm going to stamp this and I'm going to stamp it quite high because I want to leave some room for me to actually um, 
to to get to the to the bottom to to write something at the bottom and um, write my actual greeting to whoever I'm going to send this to. I'm going to emboss it. So I'm going to use the embossing buddy to make sure I've got rid of any impurities, any little greasy spots from finger marks like that. And then, as before, get verse mark. Oh, that was a nasty squeak. That was like a blackboard. I hated blackboards as a child. Oh, right. So just ink that stamp up. I have not used it before, so I'm making sure I get a good ink up on that. And place it here in the, roughly in the middle. Yeah. And of course, we can't see anything at the moment because until we get the embossing powder on it, then we see the beauty of this sentiment in all its glory. Just tap off the excess and there we have the sentiment. Oh, look, now, see, I try and be so careful and don't get this everywhere, but I always do. <laughs> now I've got embossing powder all over my desk. I might have to just give it a quick wipe. Oh, dear. Because otherwise it gets, it's gritty, it gets everywhere. Eey. Now it's all over my cloth. We'll be fine. <laughs> right, get my heat tool. And I mentioned this before again, but when you first turn on the heat tool, just try it against your wrist. Make sure that it's hot before you take it here. And that reduces the risk of the card bending quite a bit as you put the heat on it. I'm going to hold this so I hope you can actually see it as it goes. we go so may your holiday season be filled with filled with warmth and cheerful celebration all beautifully embossed and then just to finish this I've got the sprig stamp from the set and I'm going to use that with mossy meadow uh, to match the darker green hidden here and I'm just going to get a scrap piece oh, a couple of pieces there it doesn't matter I'm going to go off the edge, so I, I just want to um, make sure that I've got something covering my desk because I don't want any more mess on it, having managed to get the, um, there we go, having managed to get the uh, embossing powder everywhere, I really don't want to make any more mess. So I'll have a couple of sprigs each side like that. There we go, and there is my inside of my card done. And while I've got my stamp out, I shall do my envelope and we shall, I should keep the, get that back, shouldn't I? Let's try and just get one sheet this time. No, they're definitely stuck together, these, oh, there we go. I'm not stamping that, I'm stamping the envelope, honestly. Right, there we go. So get my sprig and again, I'm going to just stamp in the corners of the envelope. to decorate that so it's a nice Christmassy envelope coming through somebody's door so just clean off that stamp before I forget trying not to use the bit that I've just wiped up the embossing powder with I'll need to swill that cloth out well afterwards get rid of the stamp if the ink pad before I forget uh, if it's open and lean in it another of my favorite tricks right so we can now put the rest of the card together. So I'm just going to stick this piece of DSP on the front. See, the back of this DSP is gorgeous as well. I didn't show you the backs, but again, they've just got lovely random patterns. It makes beautiful, beautiful, beautiful backgrounds for cards. I've got a lovely one for my live next Tuesday. So yes, do come and join me for that one. 
that should be good oh and i've got a craft along next thursday let me tell you about that that is thursday the 5th of november and it's a live craft as long on zoom so you can come and chat to me which is would be lovely it's nice to have people to chat to on those and uh, we're going to make a fun fold with a gift card holder so do come along to that if you want all the bits you need for that are going to be in um, my email this weekend so do sign up for my emails before sunday and then you'll get there so i'm going to stick my circle on flat just in the center of the card here just slightly above the center because i'm going to put a i'll probably put the sentiment on the middle so we'll have it more or less in the center there Oop sliding around and um, do just hold things down when you're sticking things on top of anything that's got the gold shimmer on it the gold foil as part of it just hold it for a minute it just takes a little bit longer just to, to stick against that it can be a little bit more difficult so now i'm going to use my various bows and we're just going to place them around about here and make a sort of circle so i'll just start off and put the first one on here I don't want too much glue on it and I don't want it um don't want the glue around the edges because I want the branches to st sit up slightly so we'll have this one here again just holding it down to make sure it's sticking down properly and then we'll have another one so I might just um, quicken up the video when I actually publish it because it takes a while just to stick my various bits of glue on these things so um, you don't really need to see all of this in in real time because it'll take me a little while to build this up so I'll probably quicken up the video so you can see how this is formed um, without um, without it being a bit boring <laughs> and I will see you the other side when I've made my little wreath with all these bits and um, yeah I shall show you what I'm going to do with the sentiment. So this one's my last one and you'll have noticed that I've been trimming a little bit of the ends off if I need to just to make sure they tuck in neatly. So my last one's going to go up this way, Ooh, probably here, let it go in there. Just going to see if I can get it under here. Probably not. Okay. We'll just stick it on top then, just to finish this one. So it's there. There. So as you can see, I've just just sort of roughly placed these around. It's not a perfect circle or anything. Wreaths aren't perfect. So that is there. And then to finish off, I'm simply going to put this on dimensionals across the middle. Find my dimensionals. My fingers are really sticky. <laughs> Always when I'm putting on little bits like that, no matter how careful you are, you manage to get glue everywhere. That is life. So then my Merry Christmas goes across the top here. I'm covering up that little bit that I wasn't happy with where the, where the stem stuck out. And then to finish off, I'm just going to pop some ribbon on. So this is just, I think it's retired now. It's an old, very vanilla ribbon. It's whatever it is, it's gorgeous. Anyway, whatever you have that matches, um, a green ribbon or whatever. So to make a bow, what I do is, I hope I can do this online properly, wrap two sort of loops around your fingers your first finger so you end up with that cross them over and then tuck 
one end through the hole that you'd made that you'd left between them and pull through. And that gives you a nice sort of flat knot and keeps these usually <laughs> not too twisted. And then you can adjust it by simply pulling on the sides, tighten it again. I think I want it fairly small, this one. So fiddle around till you're happy with it and then get your ribbon scissors. That I know you all have because it's very important to have scissors that are just for ribbon. And there you have your ribbon. There. I think a little bit tin tinier again. There, that's good. Yeah. And that is just going to go on the bottom with a glue dot. So to put, pick up the glue dot, I find the easiest way is to press the ribbon onto the glue dot itself. And then when you lift up, the glue dot is stuck to the ribbon and then you'll stick it on the card. So there we have my simple, elegant, season of elegance, <laughs> season of elegance, very simple Christmas card. I hope you liked it and I hope you do get this these sets because they are just so gorgeous. Look at that, gold everywhere. And then I've got my gold inside to match. Thank you for joining me today. All of the measurements, I have given you them during this um, during this video, but if you've forgotten them or want to see again, they will be on the blog. Uh, uh, so at my website, craftycarolscards.co.uk. Please do subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this video, because I'd love to see you again. And do sign up for my emails on the website, because... Um, I, I really would love you to come and join me for my live craft alongs, which are the first Thursday of every month. Um, and also to see me on my lives, which are every Tuesday at 2pm on Facebook or YouTube. So thank you for joining me today and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.